My name is Matt Lushke, Senior Ag Advisor with Local Land Services. Welcome to the first video in the Farming Forecaster series. Farming Forecaster is a decision support tool for graziers. Funded through the Australian Government's Smart Farming Partnership Initiative, Farming Forecaster has been developed by Monero Farming Systems, Tablelands Farming Systems and South East Local Land Services in close conjunction with both CSIRO and software company Square V. One of the most crucial and difficult decisions in any livestock business is determining how much dry matter or grass you can grow in a season and then applying the appropriate stocking rate. This tool enables producers to get a better handle on current conditions and the likely range in pasture availability during the next three to four months, thereby reducing risks around feed budgeting and stock management. This video will provide a basic overview of Farming Forecaster, including how to access the tool and general layout of information. Now, it's important to note that the information shown throughout this video is from July 2020. So I'm just showing you a point in time for demonstration purposes. To view the tool, go to farmingforecaster.com.au. And this tool works on all your modern browsers, such as Google Chrome, Firefox, Microsoft Edge, and Safari. The new website has been designed for optimal viewing on mobile devices, such as your smartphones and tablets. So in other words, the tool works on any size of device, from your phone to your tablet, and then up to desktop computers. On all devices, the tool is accessed via your internet browser. Now, if you're using a, a phone or a tablet, um, you'll get a little message like this um, that pops up and asking you if you would like to add the web app to your home screen. Now this, by pressing on this, this little icon, the square with the, the arrow, by, by pressing on that icon, um, that actually allows you to then launch the website directly from your home screen, uh, just like an app. So this is now a, a screenshot of the home page of Farming Forecaster. And the home page is essentially a dashboard that provides a summary of the key information. And when you look at the home page, it can be divided up into four parts. Uh, we've got the probe information, which sits in the top left-hand corner, uh, the pasture forecast, and then down the bottom, we've got uh, a, a seven-day weather forecast and a member update section as well. And so what I'll do now is I'll just sort of step you through each of these four areas individually. So we're now on the Farming Forecaster website and we'll start off by looking at the probe information. So the top left-hand corner contains all the information coming directly from the probe at the location selected via the drop-down menu. So I've just selected Goulburn as, as an example, um, but as you can see in this drop-down menu, there are a number of sites that you can select. And um, at the moment, I'll just pull up Goulburn. So once you've selected the site of interest, um, the, the relevant information from the probe uh, will, be, will, be, will be shown. And the probe provides three pieces of information which is coming directly out of the paddock. We've got soil moisture, which are indicated by these, these percentage figures or numbers, um, soil moisture. We've also got some rainfall and, and soil temperature is also displayed on the home page. So if we look at soil moisture, the percentage numbers provide an indication of current soil moisture at various depths in the soil. And we can see here, we've got 10 centimetres, 20, 40, and 60. So numbers greater than 75% are shaded green and indicate very good moisture. And 100% is shown when the soil layer is fully wetted up and is sitting at field capacity, which is um, what we've got here at the, at the Goulburn side at 10 centimetres. At, uh, at the other end of the scale, 
if the percentage number is approaching zero, it means that the soil is extremely dry and plants will stop growing well before the probe readings reach zero. So for this site, the probe is indicating very good moisture at the 10 and 20 centimetre uh, depths. However, as you can see, uh, soil moisture drops off quite a bit below 20 centimetres. And if we actually, you can't see it on the home page, but if you actually went back into and looked at the probe data, um, what you, what it will show for this side is that, you know, there was actually quite quite a good amount of moisture at these lower depths earlier in the year. Um, and that moisture um, was used up largely in, uh, in autumn when there was really good um, growing conditions. And um, the more recent rainfall events that we've had of late have, have been, you know, good at sort of topping up the, the top 20 centimetres. Uh, but the site hasn't been getting enough rain of late to really influence moisture at 40 centimetres and beyond. The other thing to note with the probe, with these moisture probe readings and, and also rainfall and temperature, under the heading you'll notice that it tells you when the when the information was last updated. So, um, so it's, it's effectively uh, real-time information coming, um, coming through from the paddock. So... We've got our soil moisture percentage readings. So this is as of sort of right now. Under the change heading, these arrows and numbers tell us how does the the top the soil moisture in the top 60 centimetres, how does it actually compare to various points in time? So in other words, how does moisture in the top 60 centimetres as a total um, compare to this time last week, this time last month, and this time last year. So we can see there's virtually been no real change in the last week or month um, at this site in terms of soil moisture, and there's a very, very slight improvement compared to this time last, last year. Under the soil moisture um, readings, we've also got, or we also have um, rainfall and, and soil temperature. So all probe sites have an automatic rain gauge in the form of a rain bucket and any recent rainfall will be shown in, in these blue boxes down here. So we've got rainfall since 9am and rainfall yesterday. And on the home page, we also have um, so a soil temperature reading at 10 centimetres. Now below that, there are two buttons, a view network button and a more probe details button. Uh, you can click on these to obtain more detailed information uh, and this is covered in the training video called making sense of the probe data now moving on to the the pasture forecast um, a pasture forecast for each location is displayed in the top right hand corner up here of the home page and this forecast is produced by grass grow which is a decision support tool uh, developed by csiro and the pasture forecast provides information around the current uh, so current pasture position, which is indicated by this black tracking worm. Uh, and it also shows the likely range in pasture availability over the next three to four months, which is indicated by these, these coloured lines. And the shaded area shows the historical range in pasture availability throughout this period. And at the moment, it's the, the period that we're looking at is from the um, is from the middle of June through till the um, the end of October. So the and the shaded area is important because it actually provides us a reference point. So what we're really looking at with this pasture forecast graph is you know how is the current season tracking uh, in relation to to history? Are we tracking uh, above the long term average? And if so, we would see um, the, the the black worm and these projection lines sort of sitting in the green zone, which is uh, what we're what we're largely seeing here at the Goulburn site, um, or is the season um, tracking below the long term average? Um, and if if that was the case, then you would see um, these lines sort of sitting in, in either the orange or the red zone. Under the pasture forecast in this blue box here, we have a, a current growth um, figure, and this is a pasture growth rate. Uh, out of the grass grow model 
Um, so it's a modeled growth rate. And it's an average figure um, for the last three days. Again, there's a, a more path to detail button, which we can click on here. Um, and that just takes us to another page on Farming Forecaster, which brings up a whole range of, um, of other graphs and outputs from the, from the grass grow model. And we can get information around um, uh, ground cover and, and livestock performance, um, supplementary feeding requirements and so on. And um, there are other training videos in the series that delve into this part of the website. Um, and just finally, the other thing to note, in this, in this list of, um, of sites, there are a couple of locations. Uh, so Tralga is, is one location. Um, and, and Bynalong uh, is another one. There are some locations that don't have a moisture probe installed. These locations, you'll notice, they still have a, a pasture forecast and still have a weather forecast, but no probe data will be displayed. And as such, the top left-hand corner will always be blank. All right, so I'll just go back and pull up our, our Goulburn example again, and you'll notice that the the probe data and the, the pasture forecast will, will be displayed. And um, so moving on, we've, we've sort of covered the probe and the pasture forecast there. If we just scroll down the page um, to the weather forecast, um, the home page also includes this, this seven day weather forecast in the bottom right hand corner. And this forecast is based on, um, or, or based on data from the Bureau of Meteorology and shows the chance of rain occurring, uh, the likely amount. Um, we can also view minimum, minimum and maximum temperatures. And there will also be uh, weather warnings will pop up if certain thresholds are exceeded. Now, like the other areas, you can click on this more weather forecast detail button um, to view further information. And if we went into there, we would pull up information around, uh, or quite detailed information around um, uh, wind speed and direction. Um, there's, a, there's a spray risk, in, there's some information around spray risk. Um, and there's also a three month outlook in there as well. And, and this is actually covered again in a separate training video called Weather Forecast. The final part of the, the home page is this member update section, um, which is located down here. And this is essentially just an information hub, really, where various um, bits of information will be displayed. So at the moment, we've got some information here on the alternative fertilizer um, research. Um, and yeah, different information will be displayed in this, in this area from time to time. Now, you may have seen it earlier on, but there's actually a, a login um, feature at the very top right hand corner. And if you're a member of, of either Tablelands Farming Systems or Monero Farming Systems, you can actually log in as a member um, using this button. And the login details are provided by the um, respective farming systems groups. Now, if you were to, to log in as say a, a MFS member, um, the farming forecaster tool would look like this. So straight away, you can see that the MFS version of farming forecaster, um, it looks a little bit different. There's, there's different colors and, and different branding, um, but essentially the information is, is set out in exactly the same way. So what are some of the key features or differences between the, the member login version and, and um, the previous version we were looking at? In addition to the, the color schemes and branding, um, the, this is, the member login version remembers your preferred site. When you log in, um, there's different member updates down here. So this area will contain um, information that's specific to, to members. And the list of probe sites, uh, which, is, which is quite a long list now, this list is actually being customized so that all the, uh, the relevant um, locations are actually grouped 
towards the top of the the menu so it just saves you a bit of time in trying to uh in, in scrolling through and trying to pull up the um the areas of of interest in addition to the the website differences the other thing to note is you know one of the major benefits of being a member of a farming systems group is that you have um additional access to more in-depth analysis so um, you know, including what if scenarios and, and specific strategies to deal with uh, seasonal conditions. And this information is generally provided through uh, key seasonal update events, which are held at certain times of the year. Um, so for example, in, in you know, difficult seasons, um, additional analysis can be done, which look at, um, you know, what if, what would happen if I, you know, destocked um, by 15 to to 20 percent? Um, you know, we can actually have a look at what impact that would have on on pasture supply and, and ground cover, uh, feeding costs, cash flow, etc. Um, whereas in contrast, in above average seasons, the questions are often around, you know, how actually, how big is the feed surplus? Uh, to what degree can we lift stocking rate and profitability? And what's the risk of taking on additional stock and so all those additional sort of questions uh, can be explored through the grass grow model so that brings us to the end of the introduction uh, video to farming forecaster i hope you found that helpful for further information on other parts of the farming forecaster tool please refer to the other videos in the series thank you